Hi, this is Andrew with Front Range CNC. Today we're going to go over some different uh, terminology for tooling, um, often called router bits, uh, and this will give you, um, you know, a better understanding of, of what kind of tooling you might be looking at as you're starting to get into um, the CNC router process, especially on a larger um, industrial level now that you've got uh, ER32 collets and access to a little more horsepower on the spindle. Um, you've got you know more options than on a, on a smaller setup. So uh, there's really say five main styles of tools that you'll see um, in the router industry, and this would cover you know the majority of materials from composite to aluminum to wood, plastic, uh, foam. Uh, the the main five styles you'll see will be an up flute, a down flute, a compression a straight bit, and an O flute. And these are going to be the, the most common styles that you'll see out there. And um, they're each good at different things. And there is overlap between the different styles, but generally they are good for different applications and especially different materials. Um, a, a down flute bit, uh, that style is good at keeping your top edge clean. Um, think about if you've cut plywood uh, on a table saw and you put a piece of tape on the edge and then you cut through the tape, you know, a down flute bit theoretically is tearing that top piece inward and preventing um, tear out. Um, a down flute bit uh, typically would keep your um, chips and your material uh, with applying pressure downward. And I say this because you can start to think that if you've got a uh, part on the router table that is being held with, let's say, uh, tape, um, you don't have a, a really strong seal to begin with. And so a down flute might actually be a good thing because rather than the router bit pushing that piece up or even a straight bit moving it laterally, the down style bit is going to apply forces downward. And that might actually be um, advantageous to you depending on uh, what you're cutting um, in that moment. A down flute typically is very bad and, and really the wrong choice if you're doing aluminum or plastic, um, simply because those materials have a tendency to produce um, significant amounts of heat and the material can then melt either to itself where you just cut or to the router bit that you were using to cut that material. And so um, in plastic and aluminum, you know, a down flute bit is, is, is pretty rarely used, um, especially in router applications. Uh, the next style would be an up flute style. So an up flute style bit um, is really good at getting chips uh, out of um, whatever you're cutting, whether it's a pocket or a profile. This can help with dust collection. Um, it can also help with um, dissipating the amount of heat that the, the bit is actually encountering also. You know, a, a downside to an up flute style bit would be if you were cutting plywood, for example, and you were doing that, um, there's a high chance then that using an up style bit on plywood will tear that top edge. Uh, if you did use uh, Baltic birch, you know, you, you might be okay, but um, for the most part, as that bit starts to wear, it, it's, it's working against that, that top edge, so to say. Uh, an up style bit would be really good in aluminum and plastic simply because it will evacuate those chips um, and keep them from re-melting to themselves. Obviously, anytime you're cutting, you know, especially aluminum on a, on a router setup, you need to be aware of if you have got um, your dust collection turned on and if that's going through the same circuit as what you were just uh, collecting dust in from wood and, and just be aware that you want to keep those separate or keep your dust collector off, for example, um, just so you don't create a spark in midair. Um, the third style, as a compression bit. Now a compression bit is a combination of a down flute and an up flute. And it's almost um, primarily exclusively seen in plywood. Um, you could still use this style in really any softwood or any material that would potentially tear. So, um, you know, think about the bit is shaped closer to this where it's got both, uh, but depending on the height, you are going to engage the up flute or the down flute at different spots of your tool path. And so the most important thing if you are using a compression bit is that 
if you are doing a ramp into your part, you want to ramp in pretty aggressively. That way you can engage the down flute on the top edge and the up flute of the router bit on the bottom edge. And in that sense, you have got your piece of plywood and you're tearing both, it, both edges inward. And that's keeping that tear out from blowing outward. And so if you are using a compression bit, especially on plywood, you want to hit it pretty aggressively. Um, sometimes I'll talk to people and, and they'll be using a compression bit and they'll be cutting plywood and they'll um, you know, be noting that it doesn't seem to be working. And, and normally the, the reason is just because they're doing so many passes that they're um, engaging it almost backwards, you know, and they're engaging the, the, the up flute style of the bit on the top edge and tearing it out. And so then by the time they actually get full depth or close to it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter at that point, you've already kind of torn the, the top edge. So again, compression would combine, combine an up flute and a down flute. And that would then allow you to clean, uh, cut, uh, something with, with edges, uh, cleanly on both sides. Um, the next style would be a straight bit. So a straight bit typically, uh, rather than pulling up or down, it will pull laterally, so to say. So this, this is also, um, a fairly safe pick in aluminum and plastic. Um, as you start to get deeper in your cut, especially in aluminum and plastic, the challenge can be evacuating those chips out. So in other words, the, the first pass, uh, typically it's tall enough that it's able to, to shoot those uh, chips outward. But as you start to get deeper, you can imagine they don't have anywhere to go and they kind of get stuck in that slot. And so um, a lot of times if you are using a straight bit for um, aluminum on a router, at least, there's going to be some degree of a misting system. If you don't have access to a misting system, that's fine. You can use um, an air system. And so, you know, on all the front range machines, there's uh, they all come standard with with um, the ability to do a mister, but there's also inside of our dust hood, there's an airline that uh, you can turn on or off and to push air and blow air onto that part. Um, so like I said, this is really the most applicable in aluminum or plastic, um, but you can start to maybe visually picture what that blast of air or mist in this a sense is essentially doing. And really it's just kind of helping those chips from um, getting too warm, sitting there, and then, you know, refusing um, to, to to themselves, so to say. Uh, the, the fifth style, oh, on a straight bit too, you know, a really, a really strong way that you can utilize that bit is if you are cutting a lot of small parts, you can use, um, let's pretend a compression bit or, or a down flute bit, or you can, you can be very aggressive and leave an onion skin or a very thin layer, maybe, you know, five to 10 thousandths, depending on how your height is calibrated in your spoil board, but not much. And from there, you can leave that there so that you don't lose any suction, you don't lose any fixturing with tabs or what have you. But if you then do a tool change and get a straight bit, you can now cut out almost all of those parts without significant movement, simply because you can imagine if you get a little straight bit, maybe it's an eighth inch or something like that, as it's zipping out your final onion of your parts, it's not applying any pressure upward. Um, so it's not going to rip the part out. But the other advantage is it's not going to tear the part into your spoil board like a down flute might do. Um, it's, it's easy to think about it if, if you kind of draw it out and just think, you know, you always want to tear the top edge down or the bottom edge up. In other words, you always want to tear into the material, if you will, you know, maybe more like this, right into the material to keep um, those edges from tearing too much. Um, the fifth style that you'll see is an O flute style bit, which is just typically a single flute. Um, you know, imagine it's got one cutting edge and these are, are very common in aluminum and plastic. They're good at uh, evacuating the chips out. Um, the more, uh, you know, if you've just got one cutting edge, then likely your spindle speed or possibly your feed rate will be a little bit slower um, just so that you've got time to come around with that bit, uh, so to say, in that in that instant that it's cutting. Um, but that is, is really common because you can imagine in aluminum and plastic, you know, if you're half of that depth down, you really need help getting those chips out of that cavity or else, uh, you know, they'll want to, to remelt to themselves. 
Um, you can also use an O-flute bit in hardwood. I would say uh, hardwood that's on the higher spectrum of, of available hardwood. Think, you know, walnut uh, would be an okay application. You wouldn't have significant tearing. You would still be able to get your chips out, um, but you'd have to kind of, you know, play it, play it by uh, what that material is. Um, from there, within router bits, there's different styles of coating that you might see. Um, this is all the major manufacturers have got their own uh, kind of name for their coating. Um, normally, the different style of coating is good for different temperature ranges. And so if you've got a black coating versus a rainbow coating versus a blue coating, those are kind of the three you see the most um, and normally, though, that coating is for a certain temperature range. And um, it, it's really helpful when you're looking for tooling if you look for what that temperature range is or, or what they recommend using it on. Because you might inadvertently buy a router bit that's on sale that's got a black coating. It looks really great, um, but maybe that's actually designed for, you know, an aluminum application or plastics and you are cutting uh, you know, Baltic birch um, plywood, something like that. And so you can always try to figure out what that coating is based on you know, what the manufacturer is recommending um, the application. And then you can even just say, what is, what is the temperature range or what is the feed and speed um, that, that I would use this bit on and so on. The other thing is there's uh, more and more router bits um, are being introduced with a roughing pattern. And um, you, know, you can see in the photo, that a roughing pattern essentially is um, cuts on the actual router bit itself. This is sometimes called a chip breaker. Um, there's, uh, you know, depending on where the bit is, is originating from or even just that style of bit will, will kind of determine the verbiage. But a um, roughing bit or a chip breaker style of bit um, essentially will allow you to go quicker, uh, but the edge is not always as um, smooth as using a non-roughing bit. And so if you are running a lot of production and it's um, a hardwood material that you've got to be really aggressive in, you know, a really good strategy is to use a roughing bit to hog out all your material and then swap, get what would be called a finishing bit or, or really just a non-roughing um, non bit and then do a final pass and maybe you add a, you leave a little bit of an allowance. And so if you want the square to be two inches wide or, you know, 10 inches wide, um, you would actually do the roughing pattern at 9.8, for instance. And then when you get your finishing bit, you're now just going to kiss the corners of your square um, ever so slightly. And then that will basically leave you a nice finish. And that'll really depend again on, on what material you're cutting, how much tooling, you're needing to use um, for that particular job. Um, but for the most part, you know, if you just know generally what those five bits are, up cut, down cut, compression, straight, and O-flute, um, you can then really cut um, any material using a CNC router. So, um, you know, as long as you've got a large uh, four by eight, a five by 10 kind of a thing with um, a large enough spindle, and some method of holding your part down, you know, you can you can see how just because you're a cabinet shop, you can you, you do have the ability in house to cut, you know, essentially anything a router can do. It's the tooling is going to be the the X factor between doing cabinets and doing um, you know aluminum or plastic, for instance. And we always like to talk to people, um, you know, as as they're using our machinery to give them um, advice and helpful tips as to how we would cut it, how they can cut it. You know, we we supply tooling as well. And um, so we, we try to get everything that, that we would use ourselves that we like. And then from there, you know, provide recommendations on how to hold it, how to cut it and, and, and that kind of thing. Just try to make it easier for people. So uh, well, thank you so much. If you have questions about tooling, feel free to visit our website, um, give us a call or email. Um, we'll be happy to, you know, give you a recommendation. Um, I think tooling is one of those things that in the beginning, especially on the industrial side, it's, uh, it, it's almost as overwhelming as just finding a CNC router um, you know, company that you want to work with. And uh, so, again, if you have questions, just feel free to reach out and, and we'd be happy to let you know um, what, what we think would work well for your application um, and try to get you a little bit of a head start uh, in doing that.